Hey guys, what's going on? It is your good buddy Sam, and it's time for another exciting Max MSP tutorial. Uh, so, what are we going to do this episode? This episode, we are going to look at building an analog drum synthesizer in Max. That sounded grandiose. What I actually mean is, we're going to use a couple envelope objects to make a pretty cool sounding kick sound in Max. But um, I think it's a lot of fun. You can build kick drums pretty easily. Um, and lots of other pieces of software that aren't Max, but if you do it in Max, two cool things happen. One, you get to learn how it works, and two, you can add effects um, and layer kind of parts of the sound and ultimately have more control than you would um, in some other program. Anyway, mostly I just think it's fun, so let's, uh, let's do it. I'm going to start by making a button object. Um, here's another the button object. Maybe you've heard of it. Click it. makes a bang. Uh, it's pretty cool. Um, and I'm going to send its output uh, to a send object. I'm going to give it uh, the name hash zero trigger. And the idea here is that whenever this, we bang this bang, of course, it will send that trigger out to anywhere in the patch that we like. I'm also going to make a key object and a cell 32 because I happen to know, I think one of the most useful things I know, uh, one of the most useful pieces of knowledge I've picked up working with Max is that the key code for spacebar is 32. So now I can push 32 to trigger, that's pretty great. And um, set that up here. So at the heart of this synthesizer, I think at the heart of most synthesizers actually, you might think that it's tone generators or noise generators or envelopes or oscillators, but it's actually none of those things. Wow, okay, so I screwed up. I meant to say, um, you might think it's not envelopes, but it is in fact envelopes. Envelopes are what make, is what's going to make this, um, this synthesizer sing, and the way to do envelopes, one of the best ways to do envelopes is with the function object. Look at it, isn't it beautiful? What a sexy little object it is. Uh, if you know it, you know why it's so sexy, and if you don't, I'm gonna show you. Uh, so one of the reasons that function is so great is that you just throw a bunch of points into it, like so, and instantly you have an envelope. Um, this outlet here happens to work really well with the line tilde object, such that um, if we add a scope, and if we turn on the audio, and look, it's already on, because I am a tutorial making machine, and I was prepared for this shit. Um, and we throw a receive, no, receive trigger up here. Watch, when I push spacebar, the envelope that's up here gets played out through this line object down here. So in like two seconds, we have an envelope that we could, imagine how hard this would be to do with, I don't know, other objects. If I can change the envelope however I want, it's pretty amazing. Um, so anyway, we're going to use this envelope as sort of the fundamental building block uh, here in our patch. What we're going to do is take the output of this um, trigger here and scale it and use that to control the sound pieces that are going to build our kick sound. So the first one is going to be pitched noise. Um, basically a kick drum sound, we're going to think about as having two components, pitched and unpitched, and both of these um, come from the fact that you excite a kick with a noisy source basically by hitting it. But then the membrane itself uh, resonates at a loosely pitched frequency. Um, it's not like a tight string or something that has a very specific frequency at which it vibrates, but it sort of has a range of frequencies centered around one band um, where it does most of its vibrating. At least that's my understanding. So we're going to model that with a noise source here and a resonating filter. But let's start with the noise. Um, so the basic idea, just to give you, see, uh, give you a sense of what's going on, we're going to take this noise, multiply it by our envelope, and... Um, have that be our kick sound. So I'm going to add a gain tilde here so you can scale the contribution of this component of the sound to our final sound. And let's scale from 0, 1, 0, 1, 2. What's going on here? Taking the value 0 to 1, scaling to be in the range 0, 1, but we're adding an exponent of 2, which is to say while the input is going to be linear, we want the output to have an exponent of 2. That means that um, uh, basically, we're doing that because, of course, these are amplitude values and the perception of sound is uh, dependent on the, uh, the square of the amplitude rather than the, line, the raw amplitude value. Anyway, um, and now we're going to send these, we're going to make a send tilde, 
um, hash zero sound out. And then over here, receive tilde hash zero sound out, not count, out. And again tilde. So here's what that uh, noise sounds like. Just that envelope, this is just enveloped noise. Uh, it sounds like nothing. No, it sounds like this. Um, which, I don't know, maybe a cymbal. <laughs> a really crummy snare. Um, but anyway, so there's that first part. Uh, now what about the pitch? Well, the way we're going to start approaching pitch is by adding a resonant bandpass filter. Resin tilde. And resin's cool because um, one thing it can do is if you set the amplitude, uh, the gain rather, really high, it becomes a, the filter develops its own recirculation and its own um, tone. So I'm going to give it a gain of 50, center frequency of 220, and a really high Q, like 75. Um, and so that sounds like this. You can hear a really strong pitch in what comes out of that filter. Of course, it's way too high. But what we're going to do is um, give some amplitude, some envelope rather, to that frequency. So I've hooked a scale object into the frequency inlet of this resin. And now we're going to scale the value 0, 1, not to the range 0, 1, but to the range, say, 40 to 220. And these values are totally arbitrary. Pick whatever you think sounds good. Um, I picked these values, and it sounds like this. Very, 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 very quiet. So that can be the noisy component of our uh, kick. It's lasting a little long. Let's. Yeah, that sounds more like it. Okay, so far so good. So let's take that component, throw it to the side. And now let's add a pitch component. Um, so to do that, keep everything basically the same. Change this noise to be a saw tilde. I'm going to give it a frequency of, say, 60. Again, totally arbitrary. Pick whatever you think sounds good. Let's see how this sounds. Just that component. I like it. Um, I like it just like that. But let's mess with it a little bit. Um, let's change this filter. Cut off at 50. Yeah, okay, I can work with that. Make this amplitude a little bit different. That's uh, clipping a bit. Cool, let's add the noise back in. Cool. Sounds good to me. Um, sounds like a bit of a kick. So let's take all this, throw it over, and add one more component. Why not? This, this is the beauty of Max. You just keep adding components. I mean, it's trivial to throw more and more stuff in. I guess it's a blessing and a curse because your patches can get stupid complicated. Uh, let's make this saw 59. Why not? Maybe we'll get some beating between those. Let's make this filter resonate at, I don't know, 47. Uh, at the bottom, let's see how this one sounds. Uh, let's see how just this component sounds on its own. Hmm. Let's make this one, let's give it a gain of, say, uh, 75, but have it resonate the tighter Q. Cool. Let's add back in this one. There is, in fact, weird beating going on between them. That's cool. Weird beating is a. Uh... This kick sounds crazy. I love it. I don't know what the hell's going on, but I like it. Dude, 
Oh my god. That's so cool. All right, so let's add uh, one more thing quickly. How much time do we have? Oh, look, no time. Cool. So there you go. I mean, basically, we have the sound. We have all these different components. Um, we're able to layer them together um, and generate our output sound. Uh, but you can also layer, uh, you can also add effects, and you can also add envelopes for those effects. So here we'll add an uh, overdrive effect. Overdrive is a pretty slick little object. Um, basically, you give it a value between 1 and 10, which I think is sort of cute. It makes it almost like it's an amp. And um, this is 1 being no overdrive, 10 being lots of overdrive. And what it does is it amplifies your sound, but then cuts it off. Um, so it would say multiply it by two, but then clips values that are greater than one or less than minus one. Um, so make scale from zero to one to be from one to ten with a, um, uh, an exponent of one. And so now what's cool about this, what I actually like to do with overdrive, is start with a lot of overdrive, which sounds like, um, then go to none, which sounds like this. Um, you hear without and with. A little bit of nasty crunch at the beginning, which I think sounds good because I like terrible music. And I like to bring the overdrive back in later because it kind of gives it, it emphasizes the pitches uh, in a way that I think sounds really cool. Almost like it's this broken. Uh... Yeah, there we go. God, I effing love that sound. It's like it look. It's like it uh, ducks out and then it comes back in. It punches you in the face and then there's this weird. Uh, it's like it punches you in the face and then you're kind of woozy for a second. Oh yes. Sorry, am I getting too excited? Probably. Dude. Yes. Can't. Uh, so I do this one hand. All right, well, anyway, I could move dots around for the rest of my life, but um, there you go, man. Tons of fun just to make a uh, sound, this uh, quick kick sound to Max. Um, as you can see, Depending on what you're into, you can fiddle with little buttons all day long, tweak knobs, add components, mess with it, really get exactly the sound you want. And if you're the OCD kind of motherfucker like I am, this is really the way to go. Um, you can also add higher level controls. That's something we'll need to look at in our later tutorials, how to add some knobs and sliders to give you some higher level control uh, over the sound. But anyway, there you go. Intro to making a synthesized kick sound in Max. Hope you had fun. Hope you enjoyed looking at the sexy function object. I know I did. And um, yeah, hope you learned something. I'll see you guys next time.